India has launched its first reusable hybrid rocket, Rumi-1. This rocket has been developed by Tamil Nadu-based startup Space Zone India in collaboration with the Martin Group. The rocket has uh, been lifted off from uh, Tiruvi Vandai in Chennai, carrying a payload of uh, three cube sats and 50 uh, satellites designed to collect data and global warming and climate change uh, activities. The rocket is significant. Uh, in its appeal, it has been launched into a suborbital trajectory using a mobile launcher. It stands out for its innovation and hybrid propulsion system. This also combines the advantages of both liquid and solid fuels. This technology promises improved efficiency and reduced operational costs, making space exploration more and more accessible. Well, we'll talk about this uh, with our guests and uh, I'd like to welcome, at this point in time, Dr. Ram Shivasta, former scientist, ISRO, with us on the program. Group Captain VN Jha, former scientist and Joint Director of DRDO, also with us on the program to talk more about this. Uh, uh, extremely delighted to have uh, both of you here. It's a great day for India and it's obviously an opportunity that uh, will be replicated by uh, many others in the future as well. Group Captain VN Jha, what struck me the most when I was going through the details of this launch is that uh, you know there is very less use of TNT. Uh, it is uh, you know in a way, for the lack of a better word, and for us uh, non-technical people, uh, it is uh, logistically uh, eco-friendly as well as pocket-friendly. But apart from that, this has also been done privately with the help of ISRO, of course, and a few other councillors. What do you make of this? And this is obviously in tune, you know, with the push. Uh, and, and, and the attempts that the government has also been trying to make, uh, you know, to have the private sector take baby steps when it comes to uh, uh, space exploration. You know, it's not a giant leap, not the Neil Armstrong giant leap that we're talking about. It's the baby step that we definitely need. Oh, yes, sure, Vinay. It is a baby step, no doubt at all. And it has been designed and developed by the youths of Tamil Nadu. So, uh, in one way, when we say it is India which has launched this uh, satellite or this, this particular launch, it is not actually India or its agency, it is the, a very private firm, you know, the group of youngsters who have some sort of affiliations as a private agency. And this is the benefit, this is the fruit that India is testing today of uh, opening up the private sector in all this area. So, uh, compliments to this particular group but then you know it is it is a, a very crude form of uh, when i watched this uh, launch it is a very crude form it's a there's a sounding rocket uh, in that rocket there's a nose cone in that nose cone they have placed apparently those two three cubes and you know number of uh, pico satellites i don't know whether it is in the grams or it is in the hundreds of grams whatever it is there those are there was there uh, you know uh, it could be much better if a professional launcher group who expects the company to come to them to make a launch, whether orbital or suborbital or, you know, if it is any other trajectory. All this, if it is to be professional, it has to be little more professional that we have watched it happening. But having said that, see, they have claimed that they are going suborbital. Uh, I will not call it suborbital. It is a parabola sort of thing. You know, they have launched at inclination. It would have gone to some altitude, and from there it would have fallen down. Now, uh, they claim it also to be reusable. We haven't seen <coughs> how it was uh, uh, retrieved. This, either the stage one uh, of the motor or the entire thing has been uh, uh, retrieved. We haven't seen that. But then, yes, uh, we we are seeing day in and day out that the SpaceX the giants of America, they are sending their rockets and they retrieve regularly on the on the absolutely fail-safe basis their stage one motors, which is the costliest one with the uh, with the fuel and everything that it has. It is the costliest one and that they are able to save and that also saves the money of it, the, the cost of the launch. So this particular group, when it has saved, uh, when it has launched that particular thing, how much useful it will be there, I can't say, but yes. Uh, when when those instruments or sensors go above uh, say 30 kilometers or 40 kilometers obviously at those 30 kilometers or 40 kilometers in the stratosphere what are the conditions it will it will uh, sense those things but whether those sensors are also uh, you know, sending the data telemetrically i'm not very sure because it's uh, such a small thing 
whether it will have the telemetry system to send all those data, I'm not sure. Whether those temperature uh, sensors or the climate sensor or any... Group Captain uh, Shah, there was another detail that caught my eye that, uh, you know, the angle of the launch was different. Instead of uh, being 89 degrees, it was uh, 70 degrees. You know, explain to our viewers and to me as well, someone who doesn't understand these technicalities for obvious reasons, that how does that really change the way the rocket is going to behave when it leaves our uh, atmosphere? Absolutely. It does, it does make a difference. You know, when you launch something vertically up, it goes up and comes down vertically down. By and large, leaving those wind conditions and other things apart. When you launch at a trajectory, uh, if you launch at say uh, 45 degree or 60 degree, that gives you the maximum time it spends and the maximum travel uh, time that it gives you. But then it goes also farthest. When you launch at 70 degree, it goes to uh, some altitude, whether it is uh, 40 kilometers or 30 kilometers, whatever it is there. It goes there and then makes that parabola, makes that parabola and then comes down from there. It achieves zero velocity uh, upward and then comes down from there. So it falls down gradually onto that trajectory. This is the difference. It is to gain more time for its sensor to collect those data through the atmosphere. If it goes vertically up, it will come vertically down. The, the time spent will be uh, much lesser. If it goes at uh, 70 degree or 60 degree, the time spent through those rarefied atmosphere is more. So gathering the data will be uh, much better. But then retrieval, you know, that is the factor. If they have intended to retrieve their uh, stage one motor, then at 70 degree or 60 degree or 45 degree, it will go much beyond into the sea. So they will have to retrieve from those places through the parachute or whatever means they have made it. Most probably they will be using parachute to retrieve it. So that becomes a little difficult, it becomes far. If it is uh, at a steep angle, it is somewhere close by, you know, about say, I can say uh, 15 kilometers or 20 kilometers, you can make that trajectory. With the trajectory, you can find out at what place it will fall down. So it is nearby for it to be retrieved. That is the difference uh, for the retrieval as well as sensing time for those sensors that they have put into the uh, uh, payload section. That's all is the difference. But then, you know, it looks to be uh, pretty crude. You know, someone holding that uh, uh, press button for a uh, launch to happen. Someone gives a count, uh, which is not uh, particularly with the seconds. So anyway, this is the first launch. I compliment that particular group. The motor has functioned all right. Although I have seen something, uh, you know, happening towards the end of the trajectory. I don't know whether it is uh, a perfect trajectory or there is some problem that they will be able to tell you. But then uh, compliment to the team that having uh, put the effort, uh, uh, achieved the uh, uh, say takeoff, that's the way it should be. And what were data they have gathered for it? Really. Absolutely. And uh, Dr. Shivastav, your thoughts on this? Obviously, another first for India when it comes to space exploration, which is eco-friendly, pocket-friendly and uh, sustainable. Certainly, it is eco-friendly or it's sustainable. It is a pocket family uh, friendly. And one, two points are very important. Today, I just remember the day of Vikram Sarabhai when their team was carrying sounding rocket uh, on a bicycle uh, that was loaded on the carrier of the bicycle. That day is now. We should salute that day. We should remember that day. And on the eve of this. Uh, uh, yesterday was the uh, your uh, national space day uh, in the memory of Chandrayaan 3. So that way, this is going to be one milestone and we must appreciate it. Uh, now, other point which is very, very important. Any scientist working in ISRO uh, is uh, getting his education and, uh, and joining the service near about at the age of 30 years. Uh, when he is 30 years in age and he is getting retired after 60. But during this time, whatever experience he has used, it is going to mud after retirement. Now, for the first time in India, this talent is being utilized because this, uh, uh, this uh, particular projectile which has been launched today is also guided by the ex-director of ISRO and there are scientists working in that particular group of Martin uh, who are getting uh, retirement from the ISRO 
majority of them they are, are there and uh, start up of young blood we must appreciate and believe that they that day is not too far when we will have competition with the spacex and then musk and uh, the main objective of this is uh, one thing is very important whenever any rocket is launched what is the trajectory trajectory is it is elliptical and center of the earth is one of the foci and now ellipse is having two foci perigee and apogee so at the time of launching the satellite is inclination our target is the very precise calculation we have to make so that our target is achieved now in this particular <coughs> case when we say it is reusable reusable doesn't mean that uh, uh, you just take it out and again refill it yes it is uh, provided our thrusters they are so accurate then when they reach up to the maximum height then during the time when they are falling freely in the gravity will give the upward thrust and very precisely all the four rocket engines are five rocket engines which are installed in it they are fired simultaneously to touch the ground or the landing place this is a mobile uh, uh, project means here the rocket our aim is to launch it at any place and our next generation of this next experiment they want to launch it in the desert of uh, saudi arab so this is a very promising achievement and we must congratulate not only the scientists of uh, this organization but also our government at the vision of making india make india as atmanirbhar bharat or in that direction this is going to add one historical milestone and i must congratulate uh, our scientists our scientists obviously they are uh, working under the umbrella of martin and because nowadays the world has reduced it is not confined to india only we have to see the competition along with the all other uh, persons working in this particular field and we are now proud of them and the day is not too far when uh, you know that china is developing with the help of russia uh, uh, to carry the helium 3 isotope from moon to the earth they are developing a new device right sir what is that device so when they are doing in that direction why we should not do it in isro being government organization there are so many restrictions correct sir still our government is giving free hand to them so that our uh, mission is fulfilled now the chandrayaan 4 chandrayaan 5 that is all clear they are working parallel but i am sure the knowledge which is gained by the experienced scientists and after the retirement they are going in the private organization they will do much much better and this is the start of that so i must congratulate you absolutely and group captain ja uh, this is also great incredible invigorating encouraging news for other startups you know that are looking to in fact uh, do well uh, in in the in in the space uh, exploration area what what does this you know feat mean for them and how do you see the future of uh, our uh, you know small and medium and big enterprise uh, space industry uh, you know growing leaps and bounds say perhaps in the next 5 to 10 years it is it's a great future great future for the private agencies in the space sector and that is why in the beginning itself i had complimented government of india for having opened up the sector now look what has happened in this case there are uh, numerous pico satellites there are some cube satellites earlier i remember i remember when pslv was uh, made uh, operational when gslv mark 1 or mark 3 was made operational isro used to wait for numbers of satellite to be made available for the launch and that took anything from 6 months to 1 year as a waiting period for the satellites to be launched now what is going to happen this particular is one satellite which has got a small payload load carrying capacity and that to a uh, much lower uh, altitude it is most probably uh, in the present form it will be utilized uh, uh, as a experimental satellite for the upper atmosphere we can't call it space space is a is is a uh, location 
which is beyond 100 kilometers of altitude, we call it von Karman's line. So beyond only, we call it space, and that too is not being expanded because uh, with every launch of the satellites, missile, and everything, atmosphere is being blown off apart, and so 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 Earth's atmosphere is expanding. But all the same, von Karman's line has not yet shifted. So only beyond 100 kilometer is the space uh, which starts from thereafter. So if something is going to be called as a space launch, it should be going to those uh, altitudes of 90 uh, kilometers or 100 kilometers plus. Uh, 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 this particular satellite is just, you know, signing rocket like, like uh, Mr. Shivasa I have mentioned. So, so it, is, it is a satellite, it is a launch to the upper atmosphere, we can call it, not beyond atmosphere. Right now it is in that space sector. As in when any uh, satellite is being launched, satellite will have to be launched into an orbit, into an stable orbit. And that stable orbit has got a particular velocity that must be there for, uh, uh, say, uh, altitude of about uh, 300 kilometers to 450 kilometers. The uh, velocity of the, of the uh, you know, quantum of about 7.4 to 7.8 kilometer per second is the velocity that has to be achieved for that satellite to remain in that orbit uh, stable. Uh, minus, of course, the decay time, what it happens. Over a time, a velocity starts washing out because of those uh, molecules of atmosphere that happens also at, at those altitudes. So decay also is to be taken care by for any uh, any satellite to remain in that altitude. So we can't call this particular thing as a competitor for the space launch or orbital launch. Uh, they have called it sub, uh, suborbital. I, I will be even reluctant to call it suborbital because it is going nowhere near the orbit. So it is upper atmosphere studies. Uh, Mr. Srivastava also has, uh, you know, told you the same thing. It is something like a, a perigee. It's it's a, it's a something like the uh, a, a particular trajectory that they are giving it their parabola type of trajectory in which time is spent for those sensor to spend collect that data at those <clears> altitudes. <throat> that is how it is going to be there. But then, you know, it is a great thing. I remember right, when 100, uh, just give me 30 seconds, when uh, 104 odd satellites were released, injected by ISRO some time back. Uh, some of those satellites were experimental satellites. Universities, they wanted to collect some data, data some, some uh, parameters. And for that, they had to wait. No, they don't have to wait. If they want to put it to say 40 kilometers, 50 kilometers, 60 kilometers, this sounding rocket itself, it may be configured to go to say uh, 60 kilometers, 70 kilometers, and collect those data and come back. It is a good thing for the Indian universities, academias to collect those data, private data, especially. All right. Vinny. So always a pleasure having you, uh, and thank you for shedding so much light and uh, illuminating our minds as well when it comes to space exploration and Dr. Ram Shivastava, amazing to have you. So thank you so much for joining us. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.